Hi guys, welcome to the video. Uh, my name is Keith and in this video I'll show you the final stages of the T45 Gosfort build made using the Hotwire CNC foam cutter and then I'm going to throw it into the air and see if she'll fly, hopefully. This is possibly the last video in the series. I may do a further one a little bit in the future but you'll see why when we come to the end. And this last video shows you how I use dead fuzz foam to make the fuselage and Profili 2 Pro to generate the wing code for the wing and to make all the foam parts with the hot wire CNC machine. And at the end of the video, I'll announce what my next project's gonna be. Something I've been wanting to do for a little while now. It's been a bit of a back to the drawing board on some of it. Uh, you might have seen from the last video that the wing was covered. Um, and I've got torque rods in here. And the intention was to put a servo in there. But when I started working at how this would go, it was just going to be too awkward to have a servo there. So in the end, what I've done, I stripped all the round paper off, which took a little bit of doing, but it worked out all right in the end. In the end, I just sewed the wing in the bath, just left it in some warm water in the bath, weighted it down, and it came off uh, fairly easy. So that's to be recovered again. So I put the servos on the outside now. And I've also put a strengthening uh, ply there, which I, I need to put some more filler on and smooth, get that smoothed in. But it, it was very thin then. I thought, well, that's never going to be any good for trying to hold it, hold it in. I also went back to the drawing board on the elevator. I'd made a, a depth on elevator. And this elevator here, I've done on the, uh, I've done it on the CNC machine. Um, I'll put up a video up showing you how, how that cut out, but uh, I did it in Fusion 360, so it's got a carbon rod going across there, and these are some extra pieces, a bit more sanding and filling to do on there. So here we go, covering the wing again. And as you can see, I've got all the pieces cut out and the holes cut out as well. And it's my favourite method of covering wings. And basically all it is is PVA glue or wood glue diluted 50-50. And basically if you can wallpaper, you can cover a wing. The, the only thing you need to be careful of is that you need to do the top and the bottom of the wing at the same time. Because what can happen as the PVA dries out, what and the brown paper tightens up you can end up with a distorted wing so this was a fairly small wing and it's got carbon rods and everything in it as well to strengthen it so here goes on the top sheet and i'll do the bottom first i'll bring a little bit over the top of the wing from the back and then do the top and then lap that over the bottom so the theory being if there's any if there's a slight edge it it's not going to lift under the, uh, any any airflow going across it. So once it's all on, we do another coat of PVA, and I've just got rid of the excess on there, and then we hang it up to dry. So that's just been hung all night. Take it down. And have a look and see what we've got. So I'm quite pleased with that. That's come out a lot better than the the other time. So it still feels a little bit on the a little bit rough. But all we need to do is just give that a very light sand down. And you can put another coat of PVA on if you want to, but I haven't found it necessary. And on the back, it's looking looking quite good as well. So uh, I'm quite impressed with that. It's probably one of my my better covering jobs. And the edges are not, even if there's a slight lip there, which you can barely feel it, you can just rub that down and put a light, little bit of lightweight filler, cover it in uh, white solar film, and then we'll get the make some arrow. I haven't actually made the arrow lines up for that yet. So the next stage will then be the poly seat on the fuselage. So we'll go on to that next. 
So we go on to cover and fuselage now. And this is using something called Poly C, which is a, a water based resin. So basically, all we do is cover the fuselage in some lightweight cloth and then go over it with the Poly C. And it's quite a messy job and it does take a little bit of fiddling to get it all around the compound curves. So this is just a quick time lapse to show you the, the, the basic technique. But it, uh, it does dry to a nice finish. And then what you do is you put, you can put quite a few coats on afterwards. It only takes about 20 minutes to dry. And the more coats you put in, it fills the weave. And it does make it last a bit better. So I'm a bit further on with the fork. As you can see, I've got the fuselage done in grey primer. Um, I haven't got the camera pit in that. So I've painted it in grey primer, just so you can see where it needs any further filling or smoothing out. Because until you get paint on, it's not always easy to see. So I can see places where I'm going to add some more filler and uh, a little bit more rubbing down to get it smooth. There's a couple of areas here. Um, so I've made quite a bit more progress on the rod in there. I've put a carbon rod in between in there just to strengthen it up a bit. Um, I'm going to cover that in. I'm undecided how I'm going to cover that yet. I may just go with some poly C to smooth it off. Um, and the rudder's um, basically done. Now that's been covered in, that's balsa and that's been covered in poly C so it's not glued on yet. So I've had a little bit of a a little bit of a job getting it um, straight with the wing. It, it was a bit out. So I think what happens as these different sections go together, each time you put it on, a small little percentage of error creeps in. And so when I looked at it compared to the wing, there was a <laughs> it was a bit wonky. <laughs> but I've now got the got the wing. Mount it on, so just take that off. And as you can see, the wing's been covered now, so it's been covered in uh, solar film and it's brown paper, and it's, that's a really strong wing now. So that's ready for some ready for decoration now. I still haven't made the aerolons yet, so I've got to make them up yet, and then. The way it's mounted, there's a little threaded uh, bolt in there that's been glued into there, and then in the, in the front there, might be quite difficult to see. There's a tiny little piece of tube that's been epoxied into there as well, so that's uh, for locating the wing at the front. And on the wing at the front there, there's a there's a small little rod in there. So the next stage is some more filling and then painting. So the gonna be painted in white, most of the fuselage, and then I'm gonna be doing it in certain parts of it in red, so the end of the wing, so it'll be like the US Navy Goshawk in the red and white color scheme. Yeah. I did think about doing it in the red arrows uh, color, but um, I thought I'd do it the US Navy Goshawk because uh, it, it looks really good, that does. Um, what I've also done is uh, cut a hole through there so the wires for the fan will come up through there and the wires for the tail plane that will come up th through there as, as well. And they're going to, the wires, so they're going to be glued to the very top there to keep them out of the way and then they'll go through you can see that there's a tiny little hole there that will go through and that comes out comes out there so that's so that will bring all the power through um, I've got a suspicion she's going to be nose heavy because the wings there and the fans there and the battery's going to be there I know it's a fairly long tail section, but I suspect she's going to be nose heavy, so I might be forced to add some weight at the end. We'll get some paint on her now and uh, get her up in the air, finally. <laughs>
finally it's done. <laughs> Seems to have been a long time. Seems to have been a long time ago since I started this. But here she is, finally finished and ready for her maiden flight. Um, the finish hasn't turned out quite as I'd like. I was hoping it'd be a little bit better, but I think it's, it's good enough. So all the decals I've made myself with this special paper you can put in your inkjet printer. And it's white backed and it's uh, self adhesive. So it works quite well, especially with this being white here. It means you don't have to be too accurate in getting it cut out. I did try just putting the, just putting the navy bit on complete, but the white is so bright it just stood out. So I've ended up cutting all the, the letters out and sticking them on. Um, it's actually turned out a bit nose heavy, which I was expecting because the fans here, um, the model itself has come out smaller than I expected. Um, I perhaps should have researched it a bit more and done some, a few tests, but um, I expected it to be a bit bigger and to be able to get the fan further back, but the fan sat right here. And then with the battery and everything over there, it's made it no, so I've had to add a considerable amount of weight to the rear end. So I've got some weight on the sides there stuck, which I've just painted in white, but a little bit more paint to go in there yet. And there's quite a lot of weight in there as well. So I think in total there's about, about three, three and a half ounces to get it to balance. And the balance point is, I've still got a bit of tape on there where the balance point is, so the balance point is there. I'm a little bit concerned about how big the jet tube is at the back. So as you can see there, it's not that big. And it's a 64 millimeter fan in there. So I'm a little bit concerned whether it's gonna have enough thrust. I've done some bench tests with it and it has got some thrust out the back, but to be honest, it doesn't feel that great. So we'll have to see how that goes. If for any reason it doesn't fly that well with the fan in there, what I might do, and probably some of you won't <laughs> like it very much, I'll um, fit a motor in the rear there, take all the weight out and turn it into a pusher prop. And I think with a, a pusher prop on it, it would, it would probably fly quite well then. I'm expecting it to be quite lively in the air. Uh, generally small models are. Um, so the maiden flight could be quite interesting. So uh, it's taken a long time to get here, and you can just you can just sort of see where the the parts are that are made by the CNC machine. <laughs> and the canopy there is on with two magnets, and the the wires for the fan the fan's just in there. The wires just come out the fan and come through the top there. And I'm gonna be flying it on the, uh, an 1800 uh, 4S battery to start with. And I've got some 2200 3Ss, which is, if it goes well enough on the 1800, I'll try the 3Ss. But if it flies well on the 1800 4Ss, then what I'll do, I'll get a few more. I've only got one of them at the moment. But, um, so that's how to make a, a plane with using DevFuzz foam to do the fuselage and Profili Pro 2 to do the wing. So here we are guys, the day of reckoning. So uh, she's all ready to go and we'll just, uh, it is a little bit windy today uh, and I've got a, a new foam wind slayer on the GoPro so hopefully that will cut a lot of the noise out. But. Uh, We'll see how she goes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no, I've got no power. <laughs> hey? Yeah. 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 Does that feel a hell of a lot better? It, well, if I'd not got older, it would have gone off the table. Yeah. No. 
still. Still not enough, is there? So here we are back at the drawing board, as I said in the video. As you can see, the uh, I've taken the fan out and upon some in investigation, I've realized that the hole in the back of the hawk wasn't big enough. Uh, I probably should have done a bit more research on it really, but uh, I didn't, so here we are. Um, so it turns out for this 64 millimeter fan, the minimum size of the hole I should have had the back, at the back would have been 50 millimeter. And the hole on this 30 millimeter, so hence why it wouldn't wouldn't fly properly. So, and the other thing is, it says it should be the fan should be four times its diameter from the end of the jet tube. So that works out about so if we say 64 times four. What's that? 240. About 256. So if we go to 250, 256. So the fan should have been there, and it was up there. So uh, yeah, nothing wrong with the fan. It's a good fan. A desi designer error. So I will build another model at some time and utilize this fan and I've got a 10 blader as well. Uh, we're going to put in something, I'm not undecided yet. I mean, if you have any ideas, just leave them in the comments. Um, uh, so, as I said a bit earlier before the flight, what we're going to do, if it didn't fly very well, I was going to stick a, a prop on the back. So that's what's going in. <laughs> so this is a three bladed uh, five by four prop. And this is a 2200 kV in runner. I've got a six bladed, uh, not a six bladed, I've got a six by four uh, two bladed prop, which I'll take with me as well to see how it goes. And uh, I've already made some uh, modifications on the, on the back of the plane. Uh, still a bit of finishing off to do on here, but I've glued this piece of ply on. I'll give you a better look at that there. So that piece of ply is glued on there. And then the motor is going to go in there. So I've got a little bit more finishing off to do. And it'll sit there. And it's got a reasonably good distance from the. Uh, doing it like that as well, if I find the thrust level is a little bit out, I can add some washes at the you know, top and bottom just to get it a bit better. So, with it being an in runner, if it's in there nice and easy and uh, and I have checked the thrust on it and it does seem to have quite a lot of thrust, so that's going to be the next thing, I suppose. <laughs> so hopefully I'm going to get this in and it should be ready for this afternoon and we'll pop down the field and see how she goes again. Wish me luck. Well, we're back again a few days later. So it was Sunday when we tried it and it's now Wednesday. So as you can see, we've got a three bay prop on the back there on a 2200 kV motor it's a 5x4 this is actually a um, quadcopter props so we'll give her a go again fingers crossed third time lucky all right, all right. Go on. No. bugger that's all I can say as you can see from the launch, uh, Jeff that's doing the launch for me, the, the launch looked pretty okay. But as she went away, I just couldn't get enough air on her to counteract the turning. And But I think there was enough power this time. And as you can see, she's ripped the wing out. Um, the servos that are in it at the time, the servos were, have been rubbish. Um, so that's why I'm probably, uh, I'm going to try and repair it and we'll try and do another video sometime down the line and see if we can get her in the air this time but it's going to take a little while now so i'm just going to put it on the back burner for a little while because to be honest I'm, i've had enough of doing this one so what's the next project going to be well for a while i've been thinking about doing a build video on the hot wire cnc machine because i get a lot of interest on it on the website and on the videos and i've got various 
information on the website and ebooks and that but i think there's nothing like seeing pictures and video as to how to do things so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a, a build video on the machine and but i'm going to do it using mostly 3d printer uh, electronics on it will keep the cost down and make it a lighter build so i've been redesigning the machine in fusion 360 to be much lighter and easier to build and i've been phone cutting for quite a while so i've learned quite a bit so hopefully this will be able to pass on to uh, you guys and you know if you want to you be able to build a machine so there'll be plans and a new ebook but i will be making a small charge for the ebook only a few dollars because i've spent a fair bit of money on getting all the electronics together so it's just a little bit to recoup the costs back and for future projects so thanks for watching the video guys i hope you had a bit of a laugh and uh, catch you next time